It can begin with something subtle, like fatigue, a rash or joint pain. But behind these everyday symptoms may lie a complex, unpredictable and often misunderstood disease. Systemic lupus is not just one disease, but many. It can quietly attack the skin, joints, kidneys, brain and virtually any organ in the body. All this is driven by a confused immune system that turns against its hosts. For many, the road to diagnosis is long and uncertain, shaped by a disease that hides in plain sight. What causes lupus? Why does it affect women so much more often than men? And how do we fight a condition that changes its shape from one person to another? In this deep dive, we'll uncover mechanisms, manifestations and management of one of the most challenging autoimmune diseases known to medicine. Systemic lupus is an autoimmune disorder caused by a faulty immune response that mistakenly targets the body's own tissues and organs. This misguided attack leads to inflammation and damage across multiple systems, resulting in a wide variety of symptoms. Tissue damage occurs due to the production of specific antibodies and immune complexes, which can often be detected years before the onset of noticeable symptoms. While lupus predominantly affects women of reproductive age, it can occur in both sexes across all age groups and ethnicities. The exact cause of lupus isn't fully understood but it likely involves a mix of genetics, hormones and environmental factors. The disease tends to run in families and certain genes can make someone more likely to develop it. Triggers such as infections, sunlight, stress or certain medications can set off lupus in people who are already at risk. Women are more affected due to immunoenhancing effects of estrogen, gene dosage effects from the X chromosome, and inherent sex-based differences in immune response. These biological factors, combined with environmental triggers, create a perfect storm for autoimmunity in women. One of the key features of lupus is the production of autoantibodies, that mistakenly target the body's own cells. These autoantibodies bind to substances released when cells die, forming immune complexes. Normally, the body has a system to clear these complexes, but in lupus they are produced in such large amounts that this system gets overwhelmed. As a result, immune complexes build up in tissue and organs, triggering inflammation and damage. This process begins because the immune system loses its ability to recognize the body's own cells as self. Faulty regulation allows harmful T and B cells, called autoreactive cells, to survive. The autoreactive B cells then produce antibodies against targets like DNA, histones and phospholipids, markers imported for lupus diagnosis. These bind target antigens and form immune complexes. When those accumulate, they activate the complement system, a part of immune defense that attracts inflammatory cells, causing tissue injury. This process can damage nearly any part of the body. Because lupus can affect multiple organs, symptoms vary widely from person to person. Common general symptoms include fatigue, weakness, low-grade fever and sensitivity to sunlight. Sunlight triggers the death of skin cells, a process called apoptosis, increasing antigen release and immune complex formation. Skin manifestations often appear first. Classing signs include a butterfly-shaped rash across the nose and cheeks. Discoid lupus causes red scaly lesions 
that can lead to permanent hair loss if they appear on the scalp. Rashes can develop elsewhere after sun exposure and mucous membranes in the mouth, throat and nose can also be damaged. Lupus commonly affects the joints, typically the small joints of the hands and knees, although other joints can also be affected, causing pain, redness and swelling. These symptoms often improve fairly quickly with movement. The heart and blood vessels can also be involved, causing pericarditis and inflammation of the heart lining. A specific type of heart valve damage, called Lehman Sachs endocarditis, can result in heart failure, heart attack or stroke. Inflammation of blood vessel walls or vasculitis may further damage organs. Lupus also accelerates atherosclerosis, increasing cardiovascular risks. The lining of the lungs or pleura is frequently affected which can result in fluid accumulation around the lungs, also called pleural effusion, while lung inflammation may mimic infection. Kidney inflammation or nephritis is serious complication of lupus. It often presents quietly and if not treated may lead to high blood pressure and kidney failure, potentially requiring dialysis. Lupus can sometimes affect the brain, resulting in numerous neurological and psychiatric issues due to inflammation of the brain's blood vessel walls or thrombosis. Common symptoms include headaches, seizures and memory impairments. Behavioral disorders and psychosis may happen either as a consequence of lupus itself or from corticosteroid therapy used in its treatment. Blood disorders such as anemia and low white blood cell and platelet counts are common. Although fertility rates in women with lupus are similar to those in the general population, there is increased risk of miscarriage, premature birth and fetal complications, particularly if pregnancy occurs during active phase of the disease. Therefore, women with lupus who are pregnant should be closely monitored. The diagnostic process begins with a detailed examination by a doctor, typically a rheumatologist, who considers symptoms, medical history and medications. Diagnosis requires meeting several criteria. Currently, the 2019 classification criteria by the European Alliance of Associations for Rheumatology and American College of Rheumatology. Laboratory tests are used to confirm or exclude lupus, monitor its progression and assess its treatment response. These may include blood counts, urine tests and the detection of specific antibodies that are linked to an autoimmune disorders. Sometimes skin or kidney biopsies are needed to confirm inflammation and disease activity. Treatment depends on disease severity, affected organs and symptoms. Mild cases with general symptoms like low-grade fever, fatigue and skin changes but no vital organ involvement are often managed with pain relievers and antimalarial drugs. If needed, low-dose corticosteroids are added. Sun protection is crucial and topical corticosteroids help skin and symptoms. Antimalarials reduce organ damage but may have adverse effect on the retina, so early eye exams are important. Severe cases, especially with uh, organ involvement like the kidneys, require aggressive therapy. High-dose corticosteroids are given initially to control inflammation, then gradually tapered. Immunosuppressive drugs may be added, if needed, to further calm the immune response. Biological therapy or biologics represent a newer and more targeted approach to treating lupus, 
Unlike uh, traditional treatments that broadly suppress the entire immune system, biologics are designed to precisely block specific immune pathways responsible for driving the disease. Think of them as smart weapons. They don't shut down the whole army, they take out the problematic generals. This helps control disease more effectively with fewer side effects. Currently, there is no cure for lupus. Complete remission or absence of disease activity without treatment is only achievable for approximately 10% of affected individuals. For others, the disease tends to have a prolonged course with occasional flare-ups. Some may develop a, a certain degree of disability due to chronic fatigue, joint tissues and kidney damage. In such cases, the aim is to achieve minimal disease activity with mild symptoms using the least amount of medication possible. This goal can be attained in about half of the cases. Additionally, some individuals may face serious complications within the first 10 years of the disease, often resulting in death from infections, thrombosis or kidney failure. While lupus remains incurable, advances in treatment and growing awareness mean more people than ever are living fuller and longer lives. Understanding the disease is the first step toward managing it. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing for more educational content. Have a great day.